So welcome everybody. Um, so um, we don't have much time, so I'm gonna go straight to the point. Um, we have a new product announcement. <laughs> and it's called uh, Juca Bridge 4 for QGIS. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> that was fine. You could all leave now. So, uh, the, the goal of, of uh, Bridge is to have a, a one-click uh, publish experience uh, from QGIS. So what is a data publication? Let me get to, for us as Geocat, being kind of the, the host of the GeoNetwork project, uh, any data publication involves these uh, three steps. So we have data set publication, data file upload, uh, we have a metadata description being published somewhere on the web, and we have a cartographic representation of that data set. The data publication in, in QGIS um, uh, was quite hard to find a screenshot for this one, but there's a data file involved. It's either in Postgres or a shape file or a geo package or a TIFF file. So there's data involved. There's some transformation involved to, to, uh, a, a, to a format that is recognized by, uh, by the server that you're going to send it to. Um, above, uh, a metadata description ha has to be provided and uploaded. So some of you may recognize here the, the metadata editor of, of QGIS that was uh, uh, majorly improved uh, last year by, uh, by, uh, by a splendid team of uh, developers. Um, and there's uh, the cartographic publication, the layer style, that uh, uh, gave us some challenges. Um, uh, the other side, of course, has to uh, understand that uh, cartography, and uh, uh, so it would usually not uh, understand the, the QGIS uh, cartography uh, na uh, by na uh, naturally. So SLD is, is the proper uh, standard to use here. Um, but the SLD export in, in, in uh, QGIS is available, but it's a bit limited here and there. So that were kind of the challenges to... to uh, so how do we uh, start with that? So GeoCAD Bridge version 3 exists uh, already. It has a history of t 10 years, but it's an Arc, uh, Arc S3. Uh, uh, who, who knows about Bridge for, for ArcMap? That's actually a good question. Okay. Uh, so, and who's using it, actually? Oh, that's, that's a very limited group. <laughs> okay, so we have a stable user base for that product all over the world. Um, it uh, gives you this one-click experience to publish to GeoServer GeoNetwork from uh, the Esri platform. And Map Server. And Map Server, yeah. Based on, the, on this uh, set of standards here. Um, so, while presenting that at conferences like this one, we always got this question, ah, do you have this user experience for, for QGIS? And, uh, but we hadn't uh, made that choice to develop that because of a, a series of, uh, of, of challenges that we, we had. So up till last year, there was hardly any metadata support in QGIS, which we made a full workflow, including metadata, a bit, uh, a bit of a challenge. Um, SLD support uh, was even more limited as it is today. Um, and there was already some tools available that, that uh, had some of this capacity. So there was the, the QGIS GeoServer plugin that was able to publish from QGIS to GeoServer. But, uh, and uh, yeah, for, for us, and this is still a, a bit of a challenge, is the, the business model behind all of this. Um, it's kind of an, it was uncertain and that, that made us doubt but we have an update to that. So, uh, metadata has improved, uh, SLD, SLD has, uh, has improved. Um, the, the QGIS Geo server is kind of abandoned. It's unfortunately, uh, unfortunate, but it's, it's, uh, it's what it is. And uh, uh, GeoCAD changed kind of his mind shift uh, and is, is now willing to experiment with, uh, with uh, uh, the licensing models. So that's why we have a GeoCAD Bridge 4. So that was an effort of, uh, of a couple of months, uh, the recent months before Phosphor G. So we had a hard time to, to finish it now. I cannot offer you a download yet, but that will uh, come soon. <laughs> so um, 
So, so you, uh, now we can publish easily to GeoNetwork, Postgres, GeoServer, and MapServer. I would also just like to point out, we're expanding the capabilities of this product. We're also going to, for our cartography, we're uh, going to be converting both from ArcSD to Mapbox style and also from QGIS to Mapbox style, because we would really like to have a solution for the mobile clients as well. So installation will be, will be as easy as it is for uh, other plugins. Um, you want to activate the plugin via the plugins menu. Um, this is uh, one of the first features. Is a kind of a, uh, we developed this actually as a developer tool, uh, so, so the developer could easily develop this. But then we said, hey, this is actually a nice feature to have uh, instantly a preview of the style that you defined on QGIS and have it instantly on SLD and Mapbox uh, GL. And GeoStyler. Oh yeah, Geostyler, yeah, comes to that. Um, configure the target server. Uh, these, these interfaces uh, you see now, they resemble very much the bridge product. So people have a very easy, uh, for ArcMap, so many people have an easy migration from, from Esri to, to the QGIS platform. So people who are aware of the, of the ArcMap bridge product may recognize these interfaces. Uh, there's a publish window. Here you see all the layers in the table of contents of your QGIS project. You click on one and you can uh, enter some metadata fields here. Uh, the goal here is to uh, provide a minimal metadata editor. So metadata editing is ki kind of boring, says me as a geo network developer. Uh, so you have to minimize it uh, where possible. Um, so we give you an, an intuitive minimal uh, metadata editor that uh, provides you a valid record according to standard that you're using. And I'm just going to interject here. We're starting with the base metadata that's been added to QGIS 3, but that's not quite sufficient for the level of detail we need to, uh, when we publish to Inspire. So we've actually had to set up a few of our own additional fields here and set up our own little SQL uh, light database in order to store this information. Uh, we hope we can work with the QGIS development uh, team in order to allow us space to record this additional metadata. Um, there's a, an additional tab here that uh, allows you to uh, do some uh, work on the attributes, uh, like uh, activating them, uh, renaming. And then there is a, you hit the publish button, there's a spinner, and this gives you then this experience. Uh, data published, symbology published, metadata published. Usually it's yes, yes, yes. This time it's no because there was an error on one layer. Um, this is still a better version. So <laughs> we're working on the things. Stop by the GeoCat booth for a demo and you can produce your own errors and warnings. Yes. Yeah, we love that because we love issues and errors. <laughs> and we love errors and then issues that relate to that. Um, so, and then uh, there is a. After you published it, you have this th uh, logo there saying this has been published. And then you, it gives you the, c this, the context menu and says, okay, view WMS layer, and that will give you the open layers preview of that layer as it is published on the, the server. Now, because Paul is experienced with GeoCat Bridge, he's kind of glossing over how nice this is. This is a really nice experience from ArcGIS Desktop. It's a really nice experience for QGIS. Once you've set this up, you can choose to publish or unpublish a layer very easily. And because you filled in all this information, all your metadata, all your cartography, all your data is going to be taken along for the ride. Um, we don't necessarily package the data. If you're referring to a database that's accessible to GeoServer or accessible to MapServer, um, you know, we'll be pointing to that table and so forth. But this is a really powerful story. As someone who used the QGIS GeoServer plugin, um, I'm very impressed when I, when I started looking at this. Please continue. Over to you. Oh, that was really quick. So, um, as many of you know, I'm an open source uh, uh, contributor. I've got the shirt to prove it. Um, and I'm here to announce a new open source project. Um, and that project is a QGIS, QGIS Bridge plugin. Uh, so, this is a new open source project that we're pleased to announce. We're starting this as an open source project rather than a proprietary project, which is what uh, Q, uh, Bridge 3 was. And this is a QGIS project. It's with a GPL license. 
and this is under a free software g p l license we are making this available of course to our customers but our customers do get a chance to access that code straight from get how and we are seeking you know con contributions and collaborations um, so that is available today you can go to the GitHub repository, you can check it out. Uh, please include all the sub modules and you can install it into QGIS 3.4 or later and try it out. Um, the, internally, the project is broken down into a couple components. So we've got the QGIS Bridge plugin, which I've just talked about, and it's going to make use of two Python libraries Bridge Common and Bridge Style. Uh, and this is all uh, Python 3 projects. So the first library, Bridge Commons, this is also a new open source project. Um, so this is a library making publishing geospatial data and metadata uh, on the internet as easy as using Python. Uh, show of hands, is Python easy? Excellent, so I really hope you check out this library and give us feedback. Um, this library kind of takes the place of gsconfig, which was a uh, open source library that's been abandoned that was used to publish things to GeoServer. This library can take the place of that, and in addition to publishing to GeoServer, it can also publish to MapServer. So it's offering you greater cap uh, capabilities. And we hope uh, it can be extended to other platforms in the future. Um, it's available on GitHub. This time it's an MIT license. So MIT is an open source license that's very popular in the Python community, especially the GeoPython community. And those are the folks we're looking to collaborate with. Here's an example. This is how you know you're at a Phosphog conference. There's code examples in the presentations. Um, I'm not going to read the code example to you. I'm not that cool. Uh, the other library that we'd like to talk about here is Bridge Style. And we take this out because we think that this library is going to see a lot of uptake and be um, really wonderful for a lot of people. So, this is a Python library that's specifically about converting between the different map styles. So once again, it's an open source MIT license. Um, internally, it's going to use GeoStyler JSON uh, as little data structures to pass the styles around. And it has capability to export to SLD and SE and the specific flavor of GeoServer SLD that allows you greater control in the fonts and special effects like uh, alpha blending and so on. Um, we are also setting it up to export to Mapbox style specification uh, in case you'd like to pick this up on the mobile devices. And almost more importantly, who here is not a Python uh, developer? You can use this on the command line. So if you want to use it in a DevOps situation or Jenkins or in little bash scripts, you'll be able to make use of a style to style command line and use that to convert between formats. So we're really hoping that this uh, levels the playing field for both a lot of the open source projects and helps um, those of us who are enjoying uh, proprietary tools a chance, to, um, a chance to make use of a wider use of technology. So bash scripting, DevOps operation, uh, automation, we would really like to see this tool picked up and used. Uh, it's also available on GitHub, uh, Python 3 MIT license, and GeoCat really welcomes collaboration. And that's not an idle threat. Um, so we are doing some, some of this in collaboration with a really nice project called GeoStyler uh, from Tretris, which I'm probably not saying right. Thanks. And uh, we managed to meet up with them at the Balsena Code Sprint. And, uh, and uh, they gave us a really nice example of their GeoStyler demo. Um, so this is a front end where you can put together your style online and convert it out to a number of different formats, but it's a JavaScript library. But they have a specification of their JSON data structure, and rather than invent our own, uh, we're collaborating with, uh, with them, and we hope that this also picks up uh, some speed and momentum within the community. So GeoStyler was not intended to be a new standard, so I'm not going to use that XKCD comic strip, uh, but it, it is uh, trying to be a little bit of a Rosetta Stone to convert between standards. Thank you. How are we doing for time? Uh, we still have like five minutes if you want to. 20 minutes? We're much too... Oh, okay. Well, that's excellent. Are there any questions?
uh, in the back. We're going to come around to it with a microphone. No, 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 we'll do the microphone. Because it needs to be picked up for the video recording as well. That's why we're asking you to use the microphone. Uh, do you have a uh, processing toolbox in QGIS for that? Um, that might be something that could be produced by those Python libraries. Right now we're really focused on that one-click publishing experience, but that's a good idea. Um, I can see how that would be uh, really advantageous. Yeah. Good. Anybody else? We accept awkward questions also. <laughs> yeah, by all means. The, the microphone's you, you coming. Said, you said you could, you could publish from ArcMap? From ESRI? Not Sorry. from not th this product. We have a product that right. publishes from ArcMap. Yeah. But okay, so if you've got like group layers in ArcMap, does it support the grouping? Yes. So GeoServer, for example, has the concept of a layer group for WMS. But it supports comes, it when you and that uh, comes straight over, yeah. Right. And um, and so just I'm gonna interrupt. Uh, We've been talking a little bit about um, GeoCat Bridge 4. This product is going to be available both for the Esri products and the QGIS projects, uh, and it's going to be making use of a lot of the same open source components. So please continue with your question. And the symbology, how complex is the symbology? How complex is I mean, if, if we have a complex symbology, do you support it? Yeah. So that's a really good question. Um, we do handle a lot of the things like picking up all the little icons and glyphs and packaging them up and sending them to GeoServers so they can use the right icons. Uh, especially with the Esri tools, a lot of the true type fonts are under a distribution restriction. And so you've got the opportunity to map from here's the little font I'm using over here to here's the little font symbol I'm using on the server side. That can be especially awkward for governments that have like standardized on symbology, donated it to Esri, and then are surprised that they don't have the right to use the symbols afterwards. So hopefully you kept your SVG files so you can reuse them uh, but, in our But like chain. a zebra style, you know, zebra, like stripes, stripe symbology, um, um, uh, polygon. Okay, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Support it? No. Yeah. You don't? Yes. You do? Yes. Yeah. Right. And also, when you publish, uh, you have uh, you have the sequence of the layers. I mean, do you keep yes. this, the sequence? Yes. It, yeah, it actually goes a little bit beyond that. In that, if you've got a specific map uh, that's configured with the layers in an order, that comes out as a, called a web map context. Um, that standard's not used by very many products, um, but we do support it. Right. And last thing, uh, labeling. When you choose a field for labeling, does it keep that? Yes, and actually this is a good point for the QGIS uh, story, because QGIS, uh, a lot of people use dynamic functions and so on when they're configuring their styles and their labels, and that hasn't been supported by the native QGIS SLD export, and it's supported right now in our initial um, you know, technology preview of GeoCAT Bridge. So already we're seeing um, much better uh, fidelity between the originals in QGIS and what we're getting out of GeoServer. So uh, we're really pleased with the initial results. Thank you. Okay, uh, we still have time for more questions. So. Excellent. Uh, one more question about uh, style conversion. You mentioned that you convert from uh, SLD to Mobox styles and so on. Yeah. Uh, will be supported also conversion to Mob Server styles um, and classification? So I'm personally not across how the current uh, GeoCat Bridge 3 does it. My understanding is it packages, no, nope, you're gonna take it. So we do have some support for taking the symbology uh, over to Map Server. I'm not it, myself uh, knowledgeable about how that is done. Can you answer that? So uh, maybe, uh, maybe I didn't fully understand the, the question, but the answer to this question is that we, we create a map file on the, on the, uh, on the arc map uh, side. And uh, uh, it's, it's true that uh, currently there's no map box style on the, on the styler library. I'm sorry. Um, is, was that an answer to your question? Wait, can you wait a second? Uh, map file, let's say, 
or uh, layer definitions uh, for for map server purposes with uh, all the styling and and, and style support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's certainly on my roadmap to have that, but it's currently not. And uh, um. in this case. With mob server, so with mob server, we can use uh, SLD. Yeah, so that's how it's handled currently. Doing okay. something more specific for map server could certainly be added to the library, and we do hope that more plugins okay. and extensions are added to that library over time. Okay, any more? Yes. Thank you. So this uh, bridge style that looks quite interesting. Um, I'm wondering how do I know? Um, like how successful was the conversion of uh, the styles? Because lots of these, like there is no good parity. So do I know if there are some errors or warnings? That's a good question. Uh, in our UI right now, we do offer a list of warnings. I'm pretty sure that when we do the conversion, we could make a list of any components of the symbology that we weren't able to make use of. But there's an awful lot of functionality in GeoServer uh, that hasn't been taken advantage of in the current SLD export. So we're really hopeful we can get very good uh, parity. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any more? If we went to the GitHub repo, I could show you like a mapping of like these functions to these functions in GeoServer. Um, yeah, we're, we're, do we're doing our best to do a good job. Okay, uh, if there are no any more further questions than so I... So I actually came with my own questions <laughs> because I like to be prepared. So one question uh, that we expected was, why didn't you directly improve the QGIS SLD uh, functionality? And the answer was really that um, we were after that Python command line experience and we were looking to collaborate with the Python community. We also do intend to use these libraries in our uh, ArcMap and uh, ArcGIS Pro tools. Um, the QGIS community also doesn't have a strong interest in SLD, uh, so we're expecting to have a, a better chance collaborating with the Python community. The other question is, why the MIT license? And the answer is really that we're, uh, that we're making friends with the, the GeoPython community. Uh, so the GeoPython community at this conference is PyCSW, GeoAPI, and GeoHealthCheck. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to that. And there was also a, a, a prepared question about GeoPackage metadata. Uh, that's not currently supported in QGIS. So if you have your metadata in your GeoPackage, QGIS isn't noticing. Uh, so that's something we'd like to work with the QGIS community on. Okay, Jody, thank you. These were really good questions. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and the talk was good as well. Thank you very much.